ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Glazov Gang. I'm Anne Marie Morell, National Director, Editor in Chief of Politichicks.tv, filling in for the irreplaceable Dr. Jamie Glazov. We love you, we miss you, where are you? <laughs> Our guest tonight, we're going to be talking about radicals and radicalism. And pretty much everyone here tonight is either, has either been a radical or has been around a lot of them. First up, Dwight Schultz. Movie and TV star, he may not be a radical, but he has played one on television. Mm -hmm. And who doesn't believe that there are radicals in Hollywood? And an honorary political, a, pol a political chick. Oh, yeah. of course, a yeah. political dude. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> <laughs> Next radical, John Duffy, an actor, a Hollywood producer, and a former Maoist communist who dabbled in the Black Pantherists. Unbelievable. <laughs> Seriously. Wow. All right. So, and for me, I was once sort of a radical. I participated in a Jerry Rubin protest. I was like 19 or 20, so that's, there you go. I've oh, got, I, I'm not anywhere. <laughs> yep. I know. Yippee. I know. See? <laughs> See? I, I was a little bit of a radical. I was a baby radical. All right. Uh, there have never been more radicals in the White House than there are with this Obama administration. I don't think our family, founding mm -hmm. fathers had a clue that this could happen to America. Yeah. Um, we're going to start off with Christian Ander Adams, yeah. Christian Adams Sorry. article, yeah, in front page, Stop Giving Obama Radicals the Benefit of the Doubt, and he referenced Samantha Power. I don't think a lot of people know about this. In 2011, Samantha Power, national um, security staffer, one of Obama's right-hand women, she sent an email to the Pentagon with GPS <laughs> identity of Libya, and she told them, she demanded, was the quote that Christian Adams said, she demanded an airstrike on Libya with no questions asked. Well, they didn't do it. I don't know why. She told them to do it, but, and then in 2013, she was trying to get an airstrike on Syria, too. Um, the gist of this article, is that the Republican Party is still pretending that these are Democrats. These are not Democrats. I, I, John Duffy, you were once more like them than we were. How do we fight this kind of a, of a monster? Well, I think one of the things that people need to make a distinction, a lot of times people call them liberals, and I think they used to be liberals in the Democratic Party back in the 60s and old-fashioned liberals, and that's a really different thing than what exists in, in the Democratic Party now. I mean, they don't call themselves liberals. They don't feel that they're liberals. I mean, they, they've taken on the name progressives because it's a name that they've wanted to use. Some of them are socialists. Some of them are radicals and leftists, but they use the term progressive because they feel that that's a a better, you know, brand that they can brand because if they honestly go out and tell the people of America, hey, we like socialism, well, the majority of people of America don't like socialism. So that's not going to catch on very well. So they have to rebrand themselves, and that's what they did. And a lot of times by calling them liberals, I think, just kind of confuses the thing. And I think, you know, if anything, what they do is they try and call people they disagree with extremists. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to rebrand them to what they are, which is radical leftists. They need a rebranding that's based on the truth as opposed to how they want to make their brand look nicer and smell nicer. Okay, so uh, how do we deal with these kind of people? Well, right. it, it's really simple. I, I think it's very simple, but it doesn't seem to, to, to get across. It's the truth. And when John McCain said, you, don't, you have nothing to be afraid of with uh, Barack Obama, that was the biggest lie. Yeah that was told during the campaign. The w and, and he has proven it time and time again because he, he, he disagrees with everything that Barack Obama does. And he tells us we have to be concerned about what he's doing. What is he doing? What is Barack Obama doing? He's denuding the power of the United States. He's destroying the economy from within. And what did his wife just say? Jane Fonda. That's somebody we should look up to. That's a savvy woman. After saying she was never proud of this country until her husband was nominated to be president of the United States, that's the radical philosophy. They can say anything, do anything, and we sit back. Republicans, other than Ted Cruz, mm, Ted yeah. Cruz is the key. He called the President of the United States dangerous and frightening. Uh, Michelle Bachman, who said it's lawlessness. These are the words, and of course, Louis uh, uh, well, Louis uh, put him in there. Who, yes, and Louis Gohmert. <laughs> yes. But when, when the media says, oh, this is extremist, and you don't think that the President wants to hurt America, you have to have someone say, oh, yes, I do, because he's doing it. 
He does it week after week. And how do you appoint uh, radical after radical? You appoint Cass Sunstein, the husband of Samantha Power, a man who believes that chimps have the same rights as human beings. You are going to have a, and, and who, who, who boasted he was going to tear this country apart by tying it into knots so that they could achieve radical aims. Well, that's exactly what you've got. And unless John Boehner and others in the Republican Party say this is the truth, the president is a neo-Marxist, an international socialist. Until they have the guts to say that, and it's a simple thing. All you have to do is say it and not be afraid that the media is going to tear you apart. And, I, and, and if it doesn't happen, we're in, in serious trouble. In Christian's article, um, he says that we need to purge the word incompetence from the GOP language. Can I explain that? Why would we need to do that? Because they do seem, they seem incompetent, but they also seem very, very savvy and, and deliberate. You know, th there's always a level of incompetence in government, mm -hmm. and so that's just always existent. Anything that government does tends to be incompetent in comparison to uh, free enterprise and, and um, entrepreneurs. So that's there, but that's not the main issue, the, and that's why the issue is to focus on that is focusing on a minor issue. The, the, the main issue is focusing on the policies and the, the attempt to radically transform the country and what those issues are. So by trying to focus on some minor mistakes, just kind of distracts from what the big picture is and, what's, and being able to lay out what the different visions for America are. So you can lay out what a real vision for a better America is, a positive America, a strong America as opposed to a weak America and a, an America that's not exceptional anymore that is looking up to any small country in the third world saying they're just as exceptional as we are, <laughs> which is kind of not the truth. It's just not the truth. Just like I play basketball, but I'm not exceptional compared to great basketball players. Sorry, it's just not true. You know, Dwight, I know that you're, you're dying to talk about the U.N. climate chief's comment on communism. Why don't you lay that on us? Yes. Uh, <laughs> well, once rivals. again, we were just talking a, you know, a little earlier about uh, there's no satisfaction in being right uh, of predicting things. Uh, when this president came into office, um, uh, he upped the United Nations ambassador's seat up to cabinet level. It, it was not cabinet level under George Bush, but Susan Rice was appointed, and it was, it, she became cabinet level. Uh, and you, uh, and, and every department in the United States government, every single department was issued an edict that global warming had to be in the forefront. What, the State Department, CIA, NASA, the uh, faith-based outreach program started by George Bush had a global warming plank. And so you ask, well, where is this coming from? Principally, the United Nations. And, and really what it, 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 it transmogrified out of the sustainable development programs. That was a, a communist, uh, one of those greeny communist international socialist programs, which was tacked onto our NAFTA agreement, by the way, sustainable development. It's words you hear all the time. Green, sustainable development, climate change, global warming uh, phrases. And now, uh, Christi uh, Christiana, um, uh, what's, her, oh, wait a minute, what's her last name? Uh, Gutierrez? Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, Figueres. Yes. Figueres. <laughs> she goes back uh, along, along, back to the, the Rio Treaty mm -hmm. and Al Gore and Bill Clinton. And uh, as I suggest that the Republicans ought to be using the Freedom of Information Act to find out how many... Uh, documents have gone back and forth from the White House and the United Nations. But she said basically, um, and you could predict this, but she said only communism can save environmentalism. Only communism can, can really uh, save what we need to do or, or, or protect the world against global warming because ca capitalist societies and democratic societies, there's too much infighting, you can't get it done. China is the model. Now think about that. China, which they, the air they can't they can't see through their, the 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 air that they have, but this was to be predicted, and uh, and and Republicans ought to be making fresh meat out of this. But well, I think a lot of people, yeah. you know, not only the UN especially, and that's mm -hmm. it's just such an obscene comment because when you look at the history of communism, whether it's in Eastern Europe or in or in Asia, mm -hmm. that what they've done, the the mass murders, you know, under Stalin, under. Mao, under Pol Pot. Mm -hmm. Besides that 
horrible, you know, how effective they've been in, in killing people. What they've done, their economies and their uh, environments have been destroyed. Uh, Eastern Europe has been destroyed. So to say just because they can make decisions that somehow that's good, yeah, they're good at getting people killed, right. maybe, but where have they shown a positive influence in the world? Where have they shown a real leadership? Where, where's anybody trying to escape to go into China? No one's doing that. You know, so maybe with the exception of North Korea, which is even a worse version of communism. So you have that reality. So for her to say that is just obscene. But, but it's also today. It, it's just obscene. It, it is an obscenity, but it also it, it proves the point that we've been making. I mean, whenever I have used, when I was on the radio for a couple of years, whenever I would use the word communism and point to people who really were espousing that philosophy, I would I had, cut the communist stuff. Just cut the communist stuff. It's too much. It's all fine. There's no communist. There's, risk. There's no communism. And then, of course, you have Hugo Chavez. You've got this woman. And, and that's all that they are in the United Nations is a bunch of communists. Well, it seems and like they're coming out socialists. proudly now. Yes. This, this isn't a red scare thing anymore. They're, they're proud. They're, they're and, out there. And like Ted Cruz's father. We've got yeah. to take advantage of this. Right. This woman says this. Well, let's make sure that everybody hears it, not right. just those of us who are on the right trying to spread the, the word and the truth. But this is the truth. It was a redistributionist uh, uh, of a doctrine created by watermelons, green on the outside, red on the inside, from the Green Party, and they're laughing all the way to the re redistributionist bank. And if Republicans don't run with this, they're fools. Absolutely. Now, the American people, apparently, since I understand they, the percentage of people who like Barack Obama is down to 32%. Yep. Let's pile on because it's the truth. The truth is your, is, is your friend when it's real. And, and we should be doing that. Well, there is one politician that's fighting radicalism. Um, Governor Andrew Cuomo in New York is fighting radicals in his state. He's asking them to leave. Of course, he's talking about radicals who believe in Second Amendment rights, who believe in pro-life, and who believe that marriage is between a man and a woman. Those people are asked to leave, not the potential jihadists that might fly airplanes into buildings or murderers, rapists, killers. They're fighting radicals like, like us. Um, you're a New Yorker. What's going yeah. on there? Well, I grew up in New York, and uh, well, obviously, there's a couple of things going on. On the one hand, you know, Cuomo is positioning himself for eventual presidential run, hopefully on his part. He's got my vote. Yeah. So, so that's his thing. That's wow. one thing. So this statement was obviously a move, a move to his left, and trying to, you know, make. But more importantly, I think beyond uh, uh, some of the theatrics and, and some of the uh, theater that's gone on around the comment. Mm. I think the, the thing is, once again, there, he's able to position people as extremists who used to be the average American. Right. And now they're considered extremists. And that positioning, you, you, you know, it's kind of interesting. It's, you, you see nobody in the Democratic Party, in his opinion and in, in the media's opinion, who is either extreme or radical. They're all moderate in the center. <laughs> and it's like, really? You know, how did that happen? You know, how did the far left all of a sudden get rebranded where they're no longer extremists in any of their policies? They're so, brilliant that So way. they've been very yeah. good at that. And mm -hmm. so they always use that way to divide people who disagree with them, P mm -hmm. put you on the far right. Or even a word like uh, Harry Reid said when he called uh, people uh, anarchists. Right. Well, there are anarchists out there. They were part of the Occupy Wall Street. They were part of the left. But they were an anarchist. The anarchists were these old people in the Tea Party. Really? <laughs> what happened to the real anarchists? They, but no, no, we rebranded them as what? Good students? I mean, come on now. But that's part of the game that they, this play. Well, well you right. saw uh, Sean Hannity said he was going to leave in 2016. Yeah. Because he has, but, yeah. But, but and the, he's going to take all of his but, money with him. But when he used the word right to life, yeah. right? Uh, I would love to see Cardinal Dolan and the Catholic Church pick up and leave. Mm -hmm. That's because he invited yeah. them to leave. He he, and he yeah. says he's a Catholic. Mm -hmm. he's in, and he invited his own church to leave the state. But you don't see a Republican pointing that out. Because this is luck. We know who he is. We know what he's doing. We know that that was just a mouthful of garbage. Um, but we, we simply, if, it, if the, the shoes were on the other foot, the Democrats would be on, they'd be laughing, they'd en masse be attacking whoever said that, or said course. something that stupid. Yeah. But Republicans, for some bloody reason, they just can't, they're so frightened that they're going to be called a name by, by 
some broadcaster, mm -hmm. uh, nothing but an influence. That's all that they are, influence right. peddlers. You know, Brian Williams is a highly paid influence peddler. He's not a journalist. And, and if they start taking it to them, maybe they'll, maybe they'll get the, the guts to, to do it. But, uh. You know, I just interviewed Louis Gohmert. Mm. Love him. He's from He's my great. home district in Texas. And I asked him if he would ever run for president, and he said absolutely not because mm. he doesn't want to ever have to, to squelch his thoughts. He wants <sighs> to be able to say what he believes and do what he, when he says something, he wants to follow through yeah. and not guard himself. Mm. That's what we, ha we need so much more of that. We're, we're fighting the game like this. We're getting mm. defensive wounds instead of standing there with mm. our own weapon. Mm. Uh, uh, how do we break this pattern? When we come back, we're going to talk about... <laughs> We don't know how we're going to break this pattern. We're going to talk about, <laughs> <laughs> we have no idea. We're going, to, we're going to try to struggle through this. Um, we're going to talk about Raymond Ibrahim's last, latest article, and he talks about how the United States is facilitating Christian persecution worldwide. Mm -hmm. We are. So we're going to talk about that when we come back in the second half.